Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Hobo... Wait, wait a second. I don't look like a hobo. What, what's this thing around my neck? I look like a respectable working person. This, this can't be the right place. Wait a second, folks. Oh, that's more like it. My comfy hobo shirt. Doing what I do best. That's talking about professional wrestling. Yes, unfortunately, you just kind of saw me as I just had a video interview. Be thankful for the miracles of modern technology. I can do videos. I can have interviews. Whoa. My house. Well, I wear my boxers, a dress shirt, and tie. I don't have to go anywhere. And I can pet my cat while I'm talking on, on a video camera. And I can also talk about professional wrestling because it's Monday night. And you know what that means? There's only one show to watch on Monday night, and that's Monday Night Raw. Although I would like to thank all the people that have watched my previous video. Um, when NX, when I, Hobo Tom, invaded Sanford. Next, NXT on Thursday is coming to Daytona Beach. I plan to be there. So, yes, you can see this guy at Daytona Beach. Or probably, I'm pretty sure I'll be there to check my other work schedule tomorrow. If I'm cleared, I'm going to see what happens. Because it'll be interesting. I think this will be the first time I've seen kind of two shows back-to-back. -back, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. we got kind of the schedule of today's events. Oh, well, the schedule for this week is going to be Monday. Again, we're here on Monday. Monday Night Raw. Tomorrow's Tuesday SmackDown. And then Thursday is going to be another NXT show. Probably I'll have it up probably about Friday. Because I'll by the time you get editing and all this stuff done. Then to all those people, I'd like to thank you for watching. And I managed to create, to create a new gift. But remember, if you do comment, send an email, or subscribe, and I get your name. You get a special gift, and I have a brand new gift I'm ready to dedicate to someone. So I want to get, I think, a couple more gifts down. Anything else I need up from that? I do have to find a holy spot. That'll be pretty good. But enough about that. It's in my intro. Good intro. Time to talk about some Monday Night Raw. And WrestleMania is only two weeks away. That's pretty good. Um, Ronda Rousey came out. <laughs> Sorry to break kayfabe a little bit. Because again, she talks about how the women, um, mainly her, Charlotte, and Becky, are going to main event WrestleMania, which is going to be his first. This is going to be the first one to ever main event WrestleMania. I know they've main evented other pay-per-views, but not WrestleMania, not the big show of shows. Um, Ronda comes out, and the crowd just wants, we want Becky. And I think that Ronda Rousey's finally getting used to people booing her, whether that took a, a little talk from people backstage, hey, this is what your role is now. It might might have been that, but they started chanting, we want Becky, and, and her, her promo went a lot smoother. Um, again, she... And they did have that BS gimmick match of a beat the clock challenge, which is always fun. And down comes the whole riot squad. And of course, Becky comes in. She starts. She's starting to treat Ronda Rousey like like a like a like the female Brock Lesnar, which is pretty good. Charlotte comes out. That nude color outfit on Charlotte does not really flatter her. Makes her look naked. Hey, Charlotte. I just got a new bed, too. What's that? Christen that bed. Oh, wait, I can't say that. Shouldn't say that. So, any of you ladies out there, there's a guy called Hobo Tom. Oh, uh oh. You know, my computer likes to pop things up, and I hope I didn't press the wrong thing. Uh oh, so let's see here. Technical difficulties. There we go. I need a technical difficulty. Actually, I do have a technical difficulty. Or I used to. That's pretty cool. So, again, um, Charlotte 
does not look good in that outfit. She, she, she looks naked. Yeah, naked Charlotte. We already saw Charlotte naked once. Not impressed? But hey, to each their own. I just don't dig skinny, muscular, pelvic bones showing women. Whole I think from high school, but so the gimmick match of the Beat the Clock Challenge begins, and Ronda Rousey starts with Sarah Logan. Poor Sarah Logan. <laughs> Sarah Logan does a smart thing; she at least tries to waste some time by running around the ring. Be pretty good. Um, she got a few shots in on Ronda Rousey. Not enough. Ronda Rousey hit like a Superman punch, put her in the armbar. I think it took a total of like a minute and 25 seconds. Thank you, Sarah Logan. Fuck your paycheck at the table and get your corned beef sandwich. Or ham sandwich, yeah. And then it was Charlotte's turn. And this time she was to face Ruby Riot. And thankfully, this match just went over. I understand why they're jobbing Sarah Logan out. God, they've just killed Ruby Riot, though. Maybe she should go back to AEW. What was that? And and become a, and, and or, or reintroduce her cousin Heidi Heidi Lovelace. To AEW, maybe. A lot of people from WWE are jumping ship to other places. So thankfully, this got a little bit longer. Hooray, Ruby Riot for showing a little bit more offense. Flair, she got Ruby Riot in the figure eight, but could not beat the clock. She held out long enough. Referee, the buzzer went off. So, no, referee's match is over. Charlotte, you lose. Good. And then Becky Lynch got in there against Liv. Of course, Charlotte Flair was upset. She just kicked Becky in the face. Liv actually showed a little bit of offense, too. But because this is Liv Morgan. She lost two. And in fact, Becky won the Beat the Clock Challenge. So Becky wins the gimmick match. Good for Becky. Um, this, this was okay. It was almost, once you saw the pairings, it was actually really predictable. And because it was that really predictable, it's going to get a ham sandwich. And, I mean, there's not much you can do about predictable matches. Once you saw who they were going to face, that was the end of that. I hate it. I have to scrap something on my knee. Then the next match was Finn Balor versus Jinder Mahal. And teaming up with him was Bobby Lashley because Leo Rush was not clear to wrestle. Ugh, I'm not a big fan of these two-on-one matches. Because someone's going to look weak, and you don't necessarily want it to be who you want to look weak. In fact, especially with gender, being a former WWE champion, you don't necessarily want him to look weak. Bobby Lashley is the Intercontinental Champion. You don't want him to look weak. Finn's going to retake that belt. You don't want him to look weak. So this was really that kind of no-win situation. And I'll, I'll get to the booking of the show in a moment, too. But um, it, was a, it was a good match. Leo Rush was funny, though. Leo Rush has been working so hard on his promo skills, and this thing on my neck was really bugging me. Click up thing there. One day I'll just cut it off. There we go. Most of it's off. A little scab tag. Doing my personal grooming online. I wonder only two people watch this show. I'll get into that later. That feels better. So with this, um, oh, Leo Rush had a great line. It's a hot piece of garbage, hot piece of broken garbage, just like Bob Gronkowski. Oh, you want to upset 
Boston fans, you make fun of Rob Gronkowski, the Patriots, Tom Brady, or the Red Sox. Even to some lesser degree, the Boston Bruins. They haven't done much recently. It's been I think, eight years, I think, since they won the Cup. Maybe more. About that much. This was a good match. Um, Bayer Lashley's, again, shown to be strong. He's definitely the strong person. Jinder Mahal's a strong person. Finn's the more agile one. Out of all those, I think Leo Rush is even smaller than the Singh brothers. Singh brothers do get involved, too. But Finn really, because it's a tag team match, you have to tag back and forth, so at least Finn gets some reprise. Um, it was it was okay. Again, I'm not a fan of these two-on-one matches. It, it wasn't anything bad. It wasn't didn't get me excited, though. So with that, it's a ham sandwich. And then he cuts Elias on the streets of New York. Tells some small town entertainer to get out of my way. He's still getting interrupted. He's not even on live TV. It's all tape segment. And this has been weird because the next match, the third match, I think this took place either at the end of the first hour or the beginning, very beginning, of, I think it was the beginning of the second hour, beginning of the 9 o'clock hour. Alistair Black versus, and Ricochet versus The Revival. And this was because the crowd stand doling out NXT ch chants left and right. These two teams have such great chemistry together. The Revival is an amazing tag team. They're good because they do all the classic tag team wrestling that I remember going back to really the rock and wrestling days. And I got a chance on YouTube to see some old rock and wrestling clips. It took me a while. I'm like, who's that guy? I'm like, oh, I, I do remember him. Names like Bill Dundee, the Moondogs. Who else was there? Was, um, again, Jerry the King Lawlers featured prominently. The Von Eriks. Baron Von Rapsky, Chief J. Strongbow, and Wahoo McDaniels. Again, that goes back a while. It was really fun, though, I'll tell you what. Those guys just like to bleed, and it just looked like everyone was in a bar fight. I think the matches I saw, everyone was busted open. The one they took the ropes down, it was a bullwhip match. What grease will bullwhip match? Just whip each other with bullwhips. Ooh. But again, there's a real classic. Alistair Black and Ricochet are gelling as a tag team, though. You can see where they're beginning to do the blind tags, and they're getting a sense of how to cut the ring off, um, especially with the end. I mean, Alistair Black, can, he's a strong striker, and he can still do the flippy stuff. Ricochet will always do flippy, flippy stuff. And to that we say, I am not worthy. I'm not worthy. We're not worthy. But when Alistair Black can do that stuff, that's pretty impressive, too. Even though he's he's a stiff striker, he probably belongs more so in New Japan because of his strong style versus the WWE. But eventually, um, they did they did isolate one of the revival. I, I was getting confused. I want to say it was Dash Wilder, Dash and Daw or or Scott Dawson. Oh, yeah, it was the guy with hair and the beard. Um, they hit. Alistair Black got tagged in Ricochet, hit the black mask on him. Ricochet went to the top to do the 630. Amazing match. You have an amazing match. You get a surf and turf rating. And this leads me to believe that... Every hour on Raw seems to have its own main event segment, which is kind of weird and good because it's put you to sleep, boring, boring. Oh, wake me up. This is exciting. But then you're like, okay, let's, let's, let's get lulled back to that. 
Oh, wait. Something good happened? So with that, that was pretty good. That was a really funny Snickers ad. I have to find that ad and figure out a way to put it on here. That was just hilarious. Featuring Rude and Gable. They're so good. Um, I won't get into that. Um, there was a Drew McIntyre promo. Roman Reigns comes out. Ro Roman Reigns just gets beaten down. And then we have Sasha Banks versus Natalia. This was actually good until the end, and then they wanted to muddle it all up. Uh, Sasha Banks has a they're, they're really good at hard slaps in Natalia. But I and then the ta Natalia uses a Mexican surfboard. That made me happy. The Mexican surfboard used to be one of my favorite moves. It's just fun to see. I haven't. I don't think I've seen. I don't think I've ever seen her do that. Or it's been so long. Again, if you're going to pull something out of your arsenal, I haven't seen in a long time. You're going to get some good statements about you. The only thing is, whenever they do anything near the outside, I kind of hold my breath because Sasha Banks is known to be a bit botchy when she goes to the outside of the ring. But this time it was fairly clean. And again, hit the meteora, and then a hurricanrana drove into the barricade. Maybe it's because Natalia is a little bit str taller, stronger, and more experienced. You never know. When Natalia uh, they eventually got back in the ring, um, Sasha Banks kind of stopped because Natalia was going to do something. Sasha Banks transitioned into the bank statement. Natalia got out of that. Natalia got Sasha Banks into the sharpshooter. And wow. Sasha Banks has a little butt there. There were a couple times you saw almost all of Sasha Banks. A camera guy. He needs a girlfriend. More than I need a girlfriend. It's pretty bad. Then eventually, Tamina and Nia Jax in the ring. Ding, ding, ding. We got to sell the dust to finish, baby. Nobody wins. Because most people beat up most people. So that means we got to sell the true dust to finish. Nobody wins, baby. Sweetheart, the dust to finish. And even though Beth Phoenix, a classic ring veteran, cleans house, we got ourselves a dusty old ham sandwich. So again, the second hour kind of does this, this down, down, whoa. No, 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 no. Woo! No, 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 no. no. Then it kind of like levels off. Top of the there's a little dip. So then there's a moment of bliss with Braun Strowman and the, and the two guys from, from Saturday Night Live. Blah, it was okay. I do have to say, though, I don't know what's going on in, in, on that booth. I saw what they did once. Renee had to adjust herself, and they all had to get drinks on a new script. Now she has Cheeto fingers, and Corey Graves got Cheeto dust and Mountain Dew spilt on his computer. Renee, you have to be a better host. Actually, Renee, you need to be a better wife. I'll talk about that next, or in a little bit. Um, oh, I also wanted to point out that there was a slow wolf sign. So that means, Stephen Larson, you're going to get this. What? So shout out to Stephen Larson. Because they got their Slow Wolf sign up. One day I'm going to make a Hobo Tom sign. We'll see what happens. They just might say, get out of here. So you never know. I wonder how they stuck that in, though. Because I knew they actually do check signs. 
I don't have a they're probably being sneaky or something. That leads us to I think right around the third hour. So again it was so and then it goes back up because well it goes up a little bit. Because then we got Apollo Cruz versus Baron Corbin. This was pretty good. Baron Corbin learned something. He learned how to kick out out of three different types of roll ups. He kicked out of a straight roll up. Hey, you know what? Apollo Cruz, I can't fault him for that. If it works once, it should work a couple more times. Um, then you try to sunset flip. He got the two count. Again, pretty good. Um, again, Baron Corbin's getting better. He, he's learning how to kick out of roll ups and other kind of sneaky pinning situations. Then he got kind of schoolboy a third time. Kicked out of that, and Baron Corbin's like, okay, we're having none of this. He went onto the outside of the ring. Uh, Apollo Crews tried to attack him. Um, he just picked him up and threw him right to the ring post. That looked great. And then uh, there was a commercial break. Then all of a sudden, Baron Corbin's back in the ring. And Baron Corbin went for like a spear in the corner. Cruz moves aside. Baron Corbin did eventually catch him. Again, there was a little bit more back and forth. Paul Cruz really didn't hit out any of his signature moves. But Baron Corbin did hit the end of days. And he did something else which looked different. I forget what that was. But again, he picked he finally picked up the win. He figured out how to kick out a roll up. But this was a this was a good fun match. It's better than it's been in the past. This is a cheeseburger match. Then we have a Seth Rollins promo. Uh, he starts talking, and eventually, before he gets to say "burn it down," it's interrupted by Paul Heyman. This time, it's the cowardly Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman needs his cell phone with him. And then, probably in a really fun match, we have Kurt Angle versus Mojo, and Paul Heyman is kind of coming up the stage, and 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 hear Kurt Angle's music hit. So everyone's chanting, you suck. And then Kurt's like, <laughs> you suck. Sit down to Paul Heyman. And like, you can see people in like the front row along the ramp get a real chuckle out of that. This Kurt Angler versus Samoa Joe was a good match. This looked really sniff and stiff and snug, just like they used to do in TNA. Again, it was re referenced that these two face each other quite frequently. They didn't say which organization, because I think then it was like TNA Wrestling, and then became Impact. I, forget, I, I think they were there for the TNA days. And that snap suplex Joe did on Kurt didn't look that smooth either. Yeah, it just looked very stiff. It looked like a real fight. And Samoa Joe comes to the ring. Best prompt. I think he's on the bottom part of my top ten promos. But if you think about my top five, Macho Man Randy Savage, Ric Flair, Chris Jericho, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock. So Samoa Joe's probably... Hulk Hogan always had a constant promo. So say Samoa Joe's, even if he's number eight, those are some elite names he's with. So, I mean, to say he's in the bottom ten, that's saying a lot. I mean, just look at the top five, though. At least of my list. Again, you can always email me your own top five promo list. It's always a good thing to debate and talk about, especially when the wrestling shows are boring. Again, Joe's just, just punching us is vicious. Ooh, vicious Samoa Joe's good. Kurt Angle is showing his age. Uh, he's really struggling to hit the German suplex, especially the one he does three times in a row. I know part of his work. I think most of it's shoot though. I don't think he I think he lost. Especially when Samoa right after Samoa Joe like dropped him on the back of his head. I know he has that neck, not something. Um, Mojo eventually does get the Coquina clutch in. 
But one thing I don't like with what the WWE is doing to Samoa Joe is that he's the champ who never seems to win, though. Whenever it's a non match, he always loses somehow. And it's kind of brings some, it's bring him down, and probably more importantly, it's bring the prestige of the U.S. title down, which is not something you really want. Um, so Kurt Angle did pin Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe had him in the Coquina Clutch. Um, Kurt kind of like leaned back, reversed it, pinned him while in the Coquina Clutch. And Kurt Angle won. Again, this was a really good match, though. I, I, I can't complain a lot. It, it felt it had that fight feel, had that shoot feel. Even if it was a work, this is a good surf and turf work. Then Triple H comes comes out with another promo. Elias gets all his hundred dollar bills stolen from his guitar case. Elias, you never leave hundred dollar bills in a guitar case. Not in New York City. Dumb, dummy, dope guy. And then in the last man standing match, we had Dean Ambrose versus Drew, and I think I was disappointed because I figured this would go a lot longer. But then they had those two segments before. And then that brought it to 10.30. So they only had about wrestling time, about 15 or so minutes, maybe a little bit less. I think if you're going to do a last man standing match, you want to definitely build up to that, to that moment. There were some good spots here, though. Um, Drew got the early advantage. He just started to brutalize Dean. Um, they found a kendo stick somewhere. Dean hit Drew with a kendo stick. Drew had some welts. Drew's going to be feeling that tomorrow because, again, he got he got his um, ribs busted open a little bit. Or right back in that area, you can see he was just bleeding, again, prior from again from that kendo stick. I don't care what you say. Small pieces of wood, they will cut and they will abrade and there will be blood. Again, this is where Renee <laughs> needs to be a better wife. If my wife saw me getting my... Heiny whoop. I would like to think that she would try and step in and intervene. Renee did not, though. Bad Renee. Shame, shame, Renee. She obviously had Cheeto fingers. Um, they went outside. Drew did the most amazing slingshot move. He had Dean underneath. He had Dean. So here's the ring. Dean was Dean was like, say this is Dean's head. Dean was underneath. Again, Drew McIntyre somewhere over there. He shots Dean into the steel part, and he lifted that ring apron up high enough so everyone could see that was the steel he was eating. And again, for some reason, the Rock and Wrestling days, they were really those mats were really trampoliny. For some reason, they were probably built a lot differently, I bet. But again, Drew then began just to slug it out, though. And it got chairs, kendo sticks. Did hit the dirty deeds. Then Dean made that mistake of going for a table. You know, the old rule you get the table, you are going through the table. And, of course, Drew did send Dean to the table. It was really fun, though. Hard to complain about, except for the fact that Renee does nothing for her husband. Just terrible. So, again, overall, though, that is a little bit of breaking kayfabe. But this, again, was a good surf and turf match. And that was raw. It was a, a really up and down show. It'll be interesting to hear what people say about it tomorrow. But hey, again, this is the one opinion of a hobo. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, again, on Tuesday, there will be the Tuesday SmackDown. And on Friday, look for a bonus video about NXT. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe. And you could have the brand new gift that I made dedicated just for you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.